Okay, so he was the expert that was brought on to talk about the PTSD, and we saw a number of experts that we talked about before. I want to get some perspective right now. I want to bring in my guests for this morning. First up, we have with us former prosecutor Melba Pearson and also criminal defense attorney Ashley McMahon. Great to have you both here. Uh, Melba, let me start with you. So much of yesterday was this medical evidence. Did it sway you to, in a way, if you were sitting on that jury, to say, you know what? I don't know. I don't think that this is a case where... I can't recommend the death penalty for a guy that has all of these issues. What do you stand on there? Right. I mean, there's definitely a lot of information that was provided to the jury yesterday. And, you know, mental health is something that we've become more aware about and attuned to, not only in the criminal justice system, but across the board in general. And we really can't underestimate the effect of childhood trauma and how that plays out in your ability to make sound decisions and to follow the law. So it's definitely going to give the jury the impression that this is a person who never had a chance, uh, who started off with you know horrible things happening in their life and that fact that they don't even understand the concept of family that like family looks out for each other as opposed to I'm supposed to be the big protector and all of that could play into why he had this you know uh, abusive behavior towards the victim Shade Dixon so you know I think that there's a lot there that can sway the jury and also from a legal perspective there's also the concern of putting someone to death who has a mental illness. So right. the defense is certainly going to make that argument. Ashley, what's your perspective? Because the other way of looking at it is here's a guy who could take care of himself. He had a job. He was in relationships. He even said he wanted to take care of a child and raise a child. How much do we care about any of this? Because he made that choice to take another life. And at the end of the day, isn't he the only one who should be held responsible for this and that we shouldn't really care about what's been going on? I mean, the counter argument is a lot of people who find themselves in this position where they commit crimes and commit murder, uh, let's say just commit murder and then find themselves uh, facing the death penalty, they've had tough pasts. Does that mean they should all be excused? Well, Jesse, here's the thing. You know, juries nowadays are a little bit more sophisticated when it comes to mental health issues. And I think in this case, you know, there's no question whether or not there has been mental health issues from day one, you know, from the defendant. Uh, refusing a public defender, refusing representation, insisting on representing himself, cussing out the judge at his um, at his first appearance hearing, even you know, um, I, I think it's it's very obvious to a jury throughout uh, this entire case, even during you know the guilt phase, that this is a defendant that clearly has some mental health issues, and you know, uh, just like what was previously stated. We as a society do not like sentencing people to death. It's one thing to get life in prison, but this is a death penalty case. We do not like sentencing people to death where there's even a question of whether or not they were capable of make, making mentally sound decisions during the commission of the crime. So, right. you know, I think it's going to weigh very heavily with the jury. And I think these experts are, are a good way to explain these issues to, uh, to lay people, to these jurors, that may not have experience with uh, mental health issues themselves or may not be doctors or psychologists themselves. But, you know, certainly it's something that we talk about in our society much more openly than, let's say, we even did 20 years ago. Right. So, yes, I think it's going to have a huge impact. And that is why this kind of evidence is allowed. As you said, we as a society don't want to do that. But it's up to this jury to figure out how much are they going to take of this. Let's play a little bit more of Dr. James Campbell from yesterday. Okay, Melba, I want to ask you this. After looking at and listening to all of these different medical experts take the stand and testify for the defense, after seeing Markeith Lloyd in court, hearing him take the stand, ever, after everything we've known about this case, from my personal per opinion, I think they're right. I haven't seen anything that would suggest that he doesn't have PTSD or that he doesn't have a psychotic ment uh, thought disorder or that he's delusional or suffers from psychosis. I could see all of the, that, those diagnoses fitting in perfectly with what happened with the Sade Dixon shooting and also the Deborah Clayton shooting. Do you disagree? Because a lot of times we have cases where the prosecution will go forward and say, uh, not so fast. You know, they, they fight against that evidence and say that the defendant doesn't have a mental health issue. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think it's kind of hard in this particular case to say that the defendant does not have a mental health issue because it was on full display when he testified. It was all over the place. And, you know, he was getting into his eating habits and, you know, it, talking about, you know, things that are quite personal that have no relevance in this case. So it's clear that he does not have the same boundaries or understands the social construct that we all live in. So that was very clear for the jury to see. And I think the expert here did a great job in using the, the dream as an explanation to be like, if you have a mental illness, it's not that you're seeing aliens or, you know, the sky is, is green to you as opposed to blue. It's just that you take everyday facts and you perceive them incorrectly. And often when coupled with violence and PTSD, you react in a violent manner as opposed to someone who does not have the same mental illness. And this is something that could have been treated if caught in a, an appropriate manner early enough. And if they weren't the cultural barriers where mental illness was not you know, accepted as a real diagnosis. So, I mean, it's definitely a tragedy all around, but I think it all goes towards life in prison as opposed to the death. Ashley, if we take this proposition that this evidence was strong and it does show that he has a mental health issue, do you think if this all of these all of this testimony was introduced during the guilt phase, we would have come with a different verdict? And if that's the case, how come it wasn't introduced? I do not think uh, in this case that we would have come to a different verdict in in the guilt phase, to be honest with you. Um, I, now, I think it probably could have helped to explain some of his testimony. I mean, you know, you saw when he testified, his testimony was extremely disjointed. It, you know, it was irrational at times and kind of came out of left field. And, you know, just as this expert is explaining, essentially what we're getting to the bottom of here is that someone with uh, PTSD or with these mental health uh, di diagnoses uh, respond to a rational stimuli or neutral stimuli with uh, disproportionate responses, okay? So his reaction to something that, you know, you or I would be able to rationalize out or, or be able to, you know, talk through or something are going to be, you know, just really out there and, and more intense than any, any person without these diagnoses. So it's very important in this sentencing phase uh, to get to life in prison versus right. uh, the death penalty, but I definitely think we still would have gotten a guilty. He still shot his three month uh, pregnant girlfriend. So right, and that's what the jury that's what the jury convicted him of. The same jury that convicted him now has to decide his punishment. It's not like you have two separate juries here. They know everything that has happened as well as we know that everything has happened. Okay, so we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we may be able to jump live. Stay tuned.